if you're not following me on Instagram, please do follow because we are uploading many behind the scene pictures and videos there. In this part, we will be talking about the remaining things related with malaria. We have already seen the life cycle of plasmodium that it gets completed in three stages that is schizogony, then gamogony and sporogony. Now when a person is affected by malaria, then what are the symptoms? The symptoms of malaria are unique. The fever uh, which a person gets, it is not just suddenly fever. So there are three stages in which we divide the symptoms. The first is called the cold stage. The second is known as the hot stage. And the third one is called the sweating stage or wet stage. Sweating or wet stage. So there are three specific stages in case of malarial infection in the symptoms. In cold stage, as the name tells us, it is associated with shivering and chilling. The person feels extremely cold. So two, three, four blankets or comforters, nothing works because this feeling is from inside and this is due to rupturing of RBCs. So this chilling or shivering that the patient feels very, very cold, that is because RBCs are rupturing due to rupturing of RBC. So whenever RBC is ruptured, this results into this chill or shiver. Hot stage, as again the name tells us, the temperature rises. There is high temperature. It can go to 106 degrees Fahrenheit. It can be very high temperature. And along with high temperature, there is increased breathing rate. and heart rate. So heart rate, breathing rate both increase. Now what is the reason of this uh, increase in temperature which we call fever? This fever is caused due to release of hemozoin. Hemozoin is released when the RBC is ruptured. So see here the RBCs are rupturing which results into this chilling and shivering and due to rupturing of RBC this hemozoin which is released, hemozoin is a pyrogen. Pyrogen is pyre generating or fire generating or fever causing substance. And then there is the third stage which is called sweating stage. So here there is excessive sweating and the temperature subsides. So temperature gets to normal with sweating. And the sweating is so much that the clothes a patient is wearing, they get completely drenched in that sweat. And that is why we call it the wet stage. So there are three stages. Now after the malarial attack, the patient feels weak, exhausted and anemic. After malaria attack, the patient feels weak, exhausted and anemic. These are the common complaints after the attack of malaria. The reason is there is uh, too much of cold and hot fluctuations. When temperature rises, uh, the breathing rate goes up, the heart rate goes up 
and then RBCs are rupturing. So RBC rupturing results into uh, anemia or anemic condition. So these are the symptoms. Now what is the profile axis? Profile axis is preventive. Preventive measures which can be take, taken. The most common thing is protect yourselves from the mosquito attack. So we can use mosquito repellent. Mosquito repellents, insect repellents, then use of mosquito net when we are uh, sleeping. Uh, on the doors, there are those wire mesh which are available. Those can be put so that the mosquitoes do not enter into our house. These are some common things which can be done. Now coming to a little technical part. There are certain chemicals which were very, very effective. That is use of DDT and BHC. These are basically insecticides. And they were very effective in killing mosquitoes. But these uh, pesticides have been banned. So we are no longer using these pesticides. But when they were used, especially after World War II, and after that also for many, many years, they were proving to be very effective in killing mosquitoes. And so controlling malaria. Nowadays, we are using biological methods to control malaria. Uh, this mosquito that is malaria, the Anopheles uh, one, malaria causing mosquito, it lays its eggs in water. It reproduces in stagnant water. So the larva which hatches from the egg is aquatic. And whenever there is a puddle or stagnant water, that is the place where these mosquitoes breed. So to control them in those uh, water bodies, biological means we are going to use some living organisms. So we introduce some larvae eating fishes. Fishes like gambusia, minnows, Trouts, they feed on these mosquito larvae. So they can be introduced into these water bodies. And the food that they are looking for is the mosquito larva. So as soon as the larva hatches from the egg, these fishes are going to feed on that larva. And if there is no larva, then obviously the adult mosquito will not be formed. We can introduce some aquatic birds like ducks. They also feed on mosquito larvae and we can also introduce some plants like Utricularia. It, all, it is an insectivorous plant. So it also feeds on mosquito larvae. So nowadays these biological methods are more commonly used because there is no side effect. For example, DDT and BHC, when they were used, they have been banned for almost more than 10-15 years now. But traces of DDT and BHC are still present in everything which is around us, including water, soil, the food that we eat. So these substances are going to remain and they cause biomagnification. So there is harmful effect of those. Biological methods would not have any side effect. There is no harm to the nature, there is no harm caused to us and that is why we are shifting to these biological uh, control methods of malaria. So these are prophylactic things. But if malaria is caused, then how do we treat it? So we have seen the symptoms. We also know how do we control it, that is prophylactic, but if somebody has malaria, somebody gets that infection, then what is the treatment? There are two uh, treatments basically, two, uh, we can say two approaches of treatment. One is symptom targeted and other is pathogen targeted. 
symptom targeted and second is pathogen targeted that means here we are going to take care of the symptom symptom is fever so here we use anti pyretic drugs anti pyretic drugs we just now talked about that the reason for rise in temperature is hemozoin which is a pyrogen a pyre generating fever generating substance so we use an anti pyretic drug that means which is going to bring down the effect of hemozoin and one very common drug which is taken is crocin which is an anti pyretic drug but it is not going to kill the pathogen to kill the pathogen there are drugs one important is quinine which is obtained from bark of chinchona tree it is a very old uh, drug a very effective drug is daraprim it is very very effective it kills the pathogen in liver cells as well as rbc so pathogen is destroyed we know in liver cells there are some stages of malarial parasite in rbc also there are some uh, stages of uh, parasite so unless and until you kill the parasite it will keep multiplying there schizogony will go on and on so whenever rbc ruptures hemozoin will be released and fever will be caused so unless and until we take care of the pathogen or we kill the pathogen we will not be able to treat malaria so this daraprim is very effective one is uh, the most latest anti malarial drug is mefloquine it is the most recent anti malarial drug so when we talk of malaria we know the different types of uh, malarial parasites that is plasmodium ovel falciparum uh, malaria and all then we also know the life cycle of malarial parasite we know the two hosts the primary and the secondary and now we also know what are the symptoms how is it different from the normal fever what is the prophylactic thing how do we prevent malaria and if somebody has malaria then how to treat it so this completes our malaria disease everything about it in the next video we'll talk about a protozoan disease